Hello there, it's Paul here and welcome along everyone. Today's project, I'm going back to the open segmented work. I have raided my shelf for all of my off cuts and everything I've got up there. I'm gonna be ripping up some of this oak. I've got some sapili here. For a base, I'm gonna use this piece of oak board, which I think is reasonably dry. Previous open segmented work I did was, I think either 12 or 15 pieces a ring. This time I'm going for 24. The other thing I've done as well is I have, earlier during the week, I cut some slivers of sapini and oak uh, on the table saw here. And I believe they're something like about 1.9 mil thick. Glue them together. Now I've gone off and machined quite a few of these down. They've mostly been planed and so that way I should have a nice smooth surface on the top and bottom. The size on these are just under 15 mil thick, so they're about 14.9. And most of these are all around about 20 mil thickness. There are a few which are probably down to about 18 mil. What I've also done is set my angles on the wedgie sled here to roughly about five and a quarter degrees. I've cut one test piece there, which does measure out correctly. I use the double-sided wedgie sled which is ideal for when you're doing closed segment work but when you're doing open segment work that's not so essential because if there is a slight bit out on that angle one you're probably not going to notice it and there's always going to be a gap between all the segments first row here is going to be 10 mil segments and i'm going to do a mixture of the oak and sapili Now that's the first row of segments all cut. As you can see there, it does leave little bits and pieces on there, which is why they need to be sanded up. Now I've just cut a piece of this oak board and I have hot glued this to a waste block. So I'm just gonna true this up and this will be the bottom. So I'll just face this off and I'm gonna put a mortise in the bottom there. Now with these segmented pieces, when you cut these, you need to make sure that you place them on at the proper distance based on their measurements. So I've cut these and these are actually 10 millimeters. Now if I go by my spreadsheet that I created on 30% overlap with 24 sides, 10 mil cut length, my ring size should be 108 mil. 108.83 so therefore i need to make sure that which is a radius of 54.41 mil so i need to make sure that i put these from the center 54 and a half or 55 mil out so it's essential that these go at the right distance because when they're glued on at that distance they'll there's obviously going to be a certain gap and it's essential that the gap ratio with the actual size of the piece stays the same. So I know that with these pieces, I've got to be somewhere around about 110 mil range when I flip this over. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this down so we're at, I mean, we're current, I'm currently at 120 mil. So I'm just gonna take about another five mil off there. And then I will 
properly taper this bottom a little bit so it's got a nice foot to sit on and just sand this all up. So all I've done is sand this up to 320. I've not put no sanding sealer or anything on it. And the reason for that is that I am highly unlikely to put sanding sealer and anything like Yorkshire grit or a wax on the main part. So I'll just face this off. Now I need to make sure the, the outside edge here is nice and flat. So I'm just gonna chalk up this outside edge and I can see I've got a bit of a ridge on the outside. Not so bothered about the, the middle. Uh, I know that is a little bit dipped, but I will probably take a little bit more of that out when I start shaping the bowl. And at least this way, when I go over my sanding board, where I can see there's still chalk left, I know that it's not flat. Now, no signs of chalk, so that means I've now got a nice flat surface around the outside. So the next job, I will get my indexing system on with my table and then I can start gluing on the pieces. Now I've got everything in place now to get ready to glue these on. I'm using my 72 hole index ring so that each hole is five degrees and I need to step this by three holes, 15 degrees each time. And the idea is once you've got your piece in place, push it on there and push onto the work that way rather than downwards. Hold it for 15 seconds and then you can move it, let go, and you can do the next piece. For this last one, I will loosen off my table. And then I will knock it back out of the way. So that is the first row done. I would now lead, if I had other pieces already, I would leave this for 15 minutes, chalk up all the tops here, use my sanding board, then to make sure, sure everything's level, then go back and do the next piece. Now, this is what I've got so far, but has anybody spotted my mistake so far? Well, my mistake, 24 pieces, and the segment ring I'm using, or the indexing ring I'm using, is 72 holes, which means it's five degree increments, and these are going on every 15 degrees but then when I need to overlap them for the other half I need to move around to seven and a half degrees so this ring is no good so I'm currently in the process of gluing a couple of pieces of plywood together like I've done there now I've got myself a 48 hole seven and a half degree indexing ring uh, very quick and easy to make if you're interested in this I do have a video up which i made last year when I made my indexing system with these indexing rings and there's various links in there to get the template and everything. Now the difference I've done compared to when I made the, this very first one was that I now use two sheets of five and a half mil ply. I glue those together and I make sure that the grain is going opposite ways because that will help reduce any bending. What I do with these differently as well is that the main hole in the center here, I do it so it just fits over my spindle past the thread and it sits on there nice and tight. Because you need to screw the chuck on fairly tight because you'll need to spin it up to sand the tops of these and possibly do some turning as well. You can't have this too thick. 
and I've found that one sheet apply between the chuck and the actual headstock there is enough. So the second half, I then drill out a slightly larger hole so that it goes right over the top of the spindle. I now have my new index ring in place and it's all lined up to where it should be. So I'm back to where I should have been. Next job is to make sure this surface is flat. And the best way to do that is to cover all the pieces with chalk and then sand them down with the sand and disc. Now just a tip, whenever I use the indexing ring, when I'm physically putting a pin in, I always switch the lathe off because it's such a habit to always go to that on off switch and you certainly don't want to do that when the ring is locked down. That's now everything smooth. All the chalk has gone. And I'll just blow the dust out. So it's nice and clean for the next glue up. And for the next pieces, which are 10.5mm wide, I then need to bring them out 57 mil and the easiest way I've found to do this is set your calipers I can then bring them to the edge now these will be glued on exactly the same way a small amount of glue just held in place 15 seconds and then on to the next piece now that's the second ring just glued on and you can see that will come out slightly uh, started off with 10 millimeter pieces on this widest point and this second ring is 10 and a half millimeters which means that you get slightly bigger gaps as well as well as it coming out with the pieces still so much on top of each other it just means that i can slowly curve out the sides That's now the third row on, and when this dries properly this time, I'm going to start shaping these levels. I will be cutting these next, which I glued up, so it will be interesting to see how these look on there. Where I've gone 10, 10 and a half, 11, these will be 11 and a half mil, so again, there'll be another slight step out, the same as the rest of the pieces so far. After that, I'm going to start doing more of an exaggerated curve. Now, I'm not bothered about shaping the outside yet. I want, just want the inside. Uh, at least that way, there'll still be lots of strength on the outside. Now, the important thing with this is to make sure you've got a really sharp tool. Now I've got two more rows on here now, so I've got the small laminated piece and another piece and it's now where I'm actually going to start tipping out further and the next row I've already got the pieces ready and, and I've just marked out roughly where they're going to be on there as I'm just going to turn this inside down again before it gets too too deep. Now, this is what happens if you're a little bit too aggressive at times. Just managed to take four bits out. So I've just re-sanded the bottoms of these up. And I will just try and tidy these up a bit. Re-glue them back on again. So 
So I managed to stick those pieces back on, those four pieces. Uh, in actual fact, I just stick one of them on twice because it did come free again. I've turned the inside down there now, and as you've just seen, glued the next ring on. Now, that's my final open segmented row, just been glued on. So I'm going to let that set up, and then I've got to make myself a closed segment ring to go on the top. And I should do that as 24 pieces as well. And it will just probably be out of oak. Now, this has all been sanded inside down to 320. I've made this oak ring, which is another 24 segment piece. I didn't want to take this off the lathe. It's been on here for nearly a week now. I've had to manually sand this down on my sanding board. And the idea here is to stick this on here. And then once that's on, I will just bring up another board with the tailstock, just to put a little bit of pressure on there and then leave this at least an hour or two. So the glue holds it in place within a matter of seconds. And once it's all sort of in place, you can spin the lathe by hand and you can see that it's actually fairly true on there just so I can apply a little bit of pressure on there Now, I'm really pleased with the shape I've got here. So my next job is to go off and sand all this up. And I will sand it down to 320 grit again. And for finish wise, I'm going to have to go for a spray varnish. Uh, because otherwise I'm just not going to get on the inner parts here. So I've now sanded this to 320 all over. Uh, all the gaps, what I had to do, I didn't have to use the file in the end. I cut myself some small strips of 320 and literally fed it in all the gaps and went around all the edges. And it's a case of sanding really, really gently because I don't want to take off the edges. It's just a case of getting rid of any sort of like furry bits, which has just torn out from the edge of the wood. Next job is to give this a finish and I'm just going to use a clear spray lacquer. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount this on my turntable 
um, so that I can slowly spray up as it goes round. It's going to need several coats and I'll find because this has had no sanding seal or anything on it, the grain is going to probably rise up so I will have to sand it down probably after a couple of coats. Uh, I've also just signed the bottom. So I gave this two or three coats of this spray lacquer using my turntable yesterday, left it overnight and I put it back on the lathe this morning and just gently sanded it with 400 grit which gave it a really nice smooth surface and this morning I have just given this one more light coat of the spray lacquer again. Now I started this project exactly a week ago today, uh, started it last Sunday and I had an idea of what, what to do. I was playing around with things in Google SketchUp to see how I could, what sort of shape I could get with the size pieces I was using. And I'd, as I went along, I had to just make very, very minor changes uh, because it's not until you physically see what's there in front of you as to how you can shape things. Now, I mean, if you've got a foolproof plan, you could go off and make all the pieces in one go. Now there's about 280 pieces there I physically stuck together on the lathe as I went along. Um, I mean technically if you also include all the laminated bits put together there's 384 pieces there. Now I've got to say that I found it just as easy to cut a row, come over to the bench here, sand them all down which takes probably five minutes if that, go straight up to the lathe, glue them on and every time you do a ring on this you just need to leave it 15 minutes before you can then start working on it. And during that 15 minutes, I would then go off, cut my next row, sand them down, and I'd have those ready. And it would probably be about 20, 25 minutes later. Now the reason why the glue sets so well within 15 minutes is that when you've got two perfectly flat surfaces and join them together, um, you don't need too much glue. The glue is so thin that it dries a lot, lot quicker, and therefore it has a really, really strong hold even after 15 minutes. Uh, I did use a scraper on this, and especially just to refine the curve a little bit, but I was taking extremely light cuts. And it's so easy, especially with a scraper, because you've got no bevel you're running on, to take too much out at a time. Now, some people will think it's as scary with the thing whizzing around there. I mean, it was going run, running around on my lathe, probably at around about 1,000 RPM, um, and you've got all these open air pieces. Now, I've got to say that I wasn't scared about the bits flying off and hitting me or anything like that. I was more worried about the bits flying off and I had to glue them back on again. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you on the next project video.